Science is increasingly impacting uh, our world. Uh, using environments like this, we hope we can have people develop a better understanding of what science actually is as an inquiry process. What we're doing in, in our project is to design a virtual game-like um, environment that's tightly coupled to things that the science teachers are telling us that the students uh, need to be learning. Uh, we're directly referencing what's in the syllabus with the new national science curriculum. Then we're conducting research to see how well uh, the kind of uh, environment that we've developed actually helps students learn. Now it's very difficult for students to go out and do real field work like a biologist does. So the advantages of using a 3D game environment is that we can give them a virtual field work experience that's similar in, in key ways to what, what a biologist might have. What we've designed actually is a digital experience that has two different components. One part is the 3D Emosa that we've developed. It's a game-like environment. We've also developed a computer model, a 2D computer model of Emosa. We have the students then take the information and data that they've collected in the 3D world and now think about research questions, hypotheses that they might have, and then they use the 2D NetLogo Emosa to actually run computational experiments. And so we have the teams investigating uh, really four main hypotheses and then they collect their data in the NetLogo environment, they pull that data together and then the, they, they make presentations. What was the data they collected? Did the data confirm or disconfirm their hypothesis? So the students are getting a, a very kind of rich experience about what, a, what an ecology is, what an ecosystem is, and how different aspects of an ecosystem uh, influence each other. We did see significant learning gains uh, about key things related to understanding of science, and in particular doing a scientific inquiry, the nature of variables. We saw significant learning gains uh, by both the students in the selective class as well as the comprehensive class. Another teacher commented that he's struggled in the past to get the selective kids to view science as something that you do, not something that you just uh, memorize. He felt that uh, the kind of experience that we had over the two weeks with giving those selective students a better understanding of maybe what science uh, really is, we also found in the interviews that, uh, that, the, that, that all the students in both the classes really found it a very engaging, uh, interesting way to learn science. Uh, they, they enjoyed both the game-like 3D Amosa quite a bit, but they also enjoyed using the, the 2D NetLogo Amosa. Uh, they found the interactivity that they could change different parameters and they would get different uh, results from that. They, they found that very interesting way to uh, explore the, the, the research questions. We have, as our uh, scientist uh, involved with the project, Dr. Charlotte Taylor, who's in the Faculty of Science here at the University of Sydney, a biologist. She's spent 10 years in the jungles of Malaysia doing field research, so she knows uh, quite well what, what real scientists do. We've been very fortunate to be working with the Computer Science Department at Macquarie University. We're kind of exploring uh, also ways that we might take things that are running now on a laptop and have them run on your uh, iPad or your Android device. Uh, Deborah's team has put together a, a very, very high quality uh, product for us that's combining some very interesting uh, technologies. So you come down and you're there in this herd of, uh, of these deer-like creatures there. We've named the Yurt. And you'll look around and you'll see these kind of scary looking wolf-like creatures that we call the Toro. We have a map that's up in the, in the corner of, of Amosa and you can click on that and you can, uh, you'll, you'll see that there's uh, the village where the Amosans uh, are located and there's a couple of research stations. Um, in another part of the island there's a research lab where the biologist is. So you can go and you can talk to the biologist. The Amosans themselves have ideas about what's going on and then they share a little bit about their culture and, and their history and and how they are, their hunting practices. So we asked the students in some of the activities that they have to, to go around and, and to gather information in these different parts of the world. But if you press the C key, it actually pops you up so that it's like you're a bird looking down on, on the animals. So we tried to create in terms of the computer model uh, modeling algorithms that control the animal behaviors, things that are based on these types of real computational biology algorithms. We're hoping to generalize use of these kinds of environments for learning in, in history and in social studies. There's actually many similarities between historical inquiry and scientific inquiry. As we start to then expand the kind of um, worlds that we would have to embrace different 
uh, maybe historical periods, different cultures, uh, while still having some similarities in terms of inquiry as a general powerful way that we as people can, can come to understand different aspects of, of our environment and our culture and our world. We, we think that could lead to deeper learning overall across these different areas. Uh, so the technology is a means to the end. We are creating a more rich, interesting kind of learning environment, but the goal really is to, is to deepen learning, to make it more engaging, uh, more, to find students be more motivated, uh, find ways to show students how what they learn can apply to things in their real, you know, in the real world in their, in their life. Uh, all those things, I think, um, are things that we're uh, hoping to, that might come out of uh, a project such as, such as this one.